what I'm referring to in this title is the idea that very often I get emails and and questions about, you know, should I apply to medical school this year or should I repeat this test now? In other words, your the study techniques, your ability to do well on tests directly uh you know, contributes and informs your decision about when you're going to apply to medical school and mapping out that process. Or for that matter, residency. I recently got an email from someone. I was hoping he could be on the call today. I'm not sure if he is. Uh, that had already finished medical school but didn't do well on some of the licensing exams. So the thing is that these principles that you're dealing with right now, if not addressed, going to come back in the future. The same kind of skills that you're trying to learn to overcome wherever you're at now is going to benefit you in the future if you'll learn to kind of get to the root of it and solve whatever, you know, I don't know, I don't like the word hang up, but whatever uh, kind of deficiency might be there. I hated words like that too, <laughs> but I had them. I did not get into medical school my first time I applied. And then after I left emergency medicine and wanted to switch to a different specialty, I also had the experience of not getting accepted. Uh, so I've had to overcome in a variety of ways over the years. And and now it's uh, I feel like I'm firing on all cylinders because of the mastermind community. So let me let me couch this uh, this topic as a single unifying principle. OK, why does it take time for people to you know, adjust their study techniques because it's just like changing any other habit. You know, it takes time. How long does it take? You know, you hear this this common thing thrown around about three weeks or something like that for a new principle. Let's say, for example, you're going to start get up and exercise every morning and you hadn't been doing that. On average, uh, maybe that's a bad example these days, but uh, sometimes what people have noticed is that after about three weeks, you start getting a little bit more used to it. You're the habits of repeated experience start to sink in. So that takes a little while. The harder thing to do is to make a change in your mental attitude, a permanent one I'm referring to. So let me show you what I think is kind of a guiding principle of when people come to the mastermind community, they come in a particular state of mind. And what I really call it is a crisis versus a non-crisis. And so a crisis, in, in this perspective, now this number is arbitrary. We haven't done any kind of randomized study on this yet. Uh, and I'm not sure we need to because you're going to get the point in just two seconds. And that is that if someone is coming and needs help with whether it's the MCAT test, an interview, uh, writing their personal essay, if that event that they need help with is going to be in the next three weeks, it's overwhelming. It's hard to adjust things because uh, you don't have much time for repeated experience. It's very hard to change your mental attitude when you're in that acute stress situation. So I've divided people into this acute crisis kind of thing where, you know, like, oh, my MCAT is tomorrow. What can we do about that? Can you help me? The answer is yes, but maybe not a whole lot, you know, right this moment. And then kind of like non-crisis times. And what you're going to do and how you're going to approach your problems depends so much on how much time you have to adjust your patterns that perhaps either weren't working or you want to improve on or whatever. So I've divided these into if you have maybe your test or your interviews, essay, application, whatever it is you feel like you need help with, if it's a one to two months away versus if it's three months or more. So I'm just briefly going to go through each one of these and how to kind of approach the mastermind community and problems in general. And I think you're going to see the trend that underlines all three of these areas. So I have also created a document here. Let me pull up the, the PDF version. Uh, I think I have it in this folder. It's called a starter kit. Here it is. I made this one today. Uh, I've tried a variety of kind of orientation material approaches to all these resources that there's hundreds of files in the mastermind community and how do you actually get started 
So in this little starter kit document, what I'm saying is when you very first come to the Mastermind community, to orient yourself to the specific homepage for the group you fall in. If you don't yet have an MCAT score that you're happy with and you're still applying to med school or in that process, then you're pre-MCAT. If you've got an MCAT uh, test you're happy with, haven't quite applied yet or in that transition, then you're here. BS years is kind of a funny little acronym, but uh, that means the basic science years, which is generally the first two years of medical school. And the clinical science years is usually from the third year of medical school, really for the rest of your career, okay, but specifically the last two years of medical school. So if you come to the Mastermind site, first of all, you can tell you're logged in if you're ever having trouble, but up at the upper right, it'll have your username up here. And you'll notice that here is the pre-MCAT years, post-MCAT, BS, and CS. So you, what you're going to do is just orient yourself to the resources on this page. There's a brief video that will answer some of your questions about it right here. Notice you can do account change stuff right there. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to notice what all four of these home pages have in common. They all start off with Napoleon Hill Science of Personal Achievement audio. Even if your MCAT is in one week, you still got to listen to this. That's what I'm trying to say is no matter where you are in the process, no matter when your next event is, listen to this guy. He's the world's first and best true success speaker, and he started in the 1920s, commissioned by Andrew Carnegie, friends with Thomas Edison, advisor to presidents. The list goes on and on and on. It's amazing. Listen to it. You'll see what I mean. The next thing is what you're going to discover when you're listening to this is this idea of your definite major purpose in life. What are you trying to accomplish? Very often people will say, well, I'm trying to accomplish a good MCAT score or to get into medical school or residency or get licensed or whatever the issue is that you're trying to get help for. But the definite major purpose is a bit different. It's going to make you get real specific about what you're trying to get out of life, and it's usually much bigger and broader than the very next step that you're thinking about. So listen to him. You'll see what I mean. And when you get that flash of inspiration, go to the My Blog section in the forum. So if you'll click in the forum, occasionally you have to be signed in a little separately. This is supposed to work. It doesn't work all the time where the forum keeps you logged in. So pay attention. It should also tell you you're signed in up here. So it's the same ID and password. But here's the My Blog section. What you're going to do is post your definite major purpose in there. Or if you need help with a personal essay, post your personal essay in there, your draft or whatever. And people will comment. I will comment. Always comment in the forum. I probably respond to that faster than emails, to tell you the truth, because it's more bang for the buck. I get a lot of emails. I'm a busy resident at the time. It's not going to get any better probably when I'm in attending. And, and the idea is a lot of people will look at that like this particular one has 185 posts and a, a whole lot more views. So if you'll post it in there, we'll comment and feedback. And everyone's learning um, in, in a way that's kind of multiple. It, it really expands the power to be able to help people within there. So people have posted all kinds of things like essays and so, such. Read around in there and you'll see what people in the Mastermind community are doing. Let me get back to this document. So that's oriented to that specific page. Here's what I was talking about. Understand what they all have in common. There's the Napoleon Hill link, the My Blog link, and then the study techniques. So this is going to take you back to, to our slideshow. Notice that if your test is tomorrow or next week, you don't have time to watch nine study techniques videos. There are over three hours worth of video or more. I don't even know it anymore. It's hard to keep up with. There's a lot of training for study techniques. Uh, but the study techniques themselves are broken down. Let me get out of here. These pull-down menus, by the way, don't really work uh, within the forum. But here they are. Under exam prep up here in the upper right, you've got these first three links that will 
teach you the study techniques, and they're broken down. How to study in medical school. And of course, how do you study in medical school? You study really fast and furiously and copiously, right? So that first link is about speed reading techniques. It's really a full-blown speed reading course, okay? And then step two here is study techniques training. That's going to give you a lot of different study techniques based on the type of material that you're studying. And page to page, chapter to chapter, class to class, etc. all that is different. So this is going to give you an encyclopedia of options for approaches. And that is what separates really successful medical students in that first semester and what doesn't, is how many different ways you have to, to approach it. So that right there is a grade saver when you get into medical school. And then the third one is test taking skills. This is the video that is about actual test day and what to do on that. So if you find yourself in an acute crisis type of a situation, there's no time to go through all the videos, but there is time to watch the test taking strategies. Maybe your test is tomorrow. Watch that video. Make sense? So the next group is if your event or test is one or two months away or more than three months away. That's what I call non-crisis. We can work with that. There's time to approach this. If your event or your test or your interview or your personal essay, whatever it is you need help with, is one to two months away, then I would recommend everybody to go through all the study techniques training. And if your test is in a month, go through the videos. You can do them in a couple of days or one day or not more than three if you break it up, even if you're busy. You can squeeze these in, I promise. They'll be interesting and they'll help you in real time. And the cool part about having a little time to work with is, as you'll learn in the training, you'll be able to schedule time to do a practice test with still time remaining to adjust your study techniques. And that is a, that's a unifying theme within my principles is, you know, if your test is in a month, do the training now, study for a week and a half, do a full length gold standard type of practice test. You still have two weeks. And when you have all this study techniques training, you'll be able to adjust and guarantee you're going to in increase your score or confidence or both, um, you know, in that process. So I love having a little bit more time to work with. And if, if it's an interview you have coming up with, then, you know, you can just dive right in to that type of training in the mastermind community. So under the success strategies is literally all of the different kind of things that you might find that you need. Uh, so, for example, if you're going to need help with personal essay, you can watch this personal essay workshop here, and you would want to watch the success story format video here. Make sense? So, if you know if that you got a month, you got plenty of time to show that around to people, etc., and watch all these videos. Okay. Uh, same thing with the personal essay writing or interviews. Just go to those links and grab what you want. That part's kind of intuitive. I don't get a lot of questions about that. But check this out. If your event or your test or your interview is like more than three months away, then what I really recommend people get the greatest success out of the mastermind community is if you literally go in order. Trust me. I mean, I'm not like a businessman. I didn't make this stuff up just to have a package. I guarantee you every single presentation I put together that's in this website, just like this one right here, is for a specific reason, to give you the confidence, the skills, the test anxiety type of help uh, for a reason to help you. So I would say go in order through all of, the, all of the things. So learn the study habits, the success story format, personal essay and application narratives. How do you do that? Even if you're not to that step, if you got more than three months away and your test is like, three, four, five months away, learn this stuff too. Be thinking about the next step, and that will motivate you to keep studying because you'll see your life in the bigger picture, okay, and why you're doing You'll be reminded of why you're doing all this, and that's a big deal when you get burned out. In fact, I think this will help prevent burnout. And then interview skills, that'll be fun. Here's the thing. If you don't go in order, if you're somebody that, found the mastermind community late or maybe it was already after a year where you didn't get accepted or in some cases we've had people that haven't gotten accepted for years in a row come to the mastermind community and some 
of them have been interviewed in podcasts where you know they got multiple acceptances to medical school after uh, the mastermind community training. You've heard that before. I still get that stuff. In fact, I'm about to probably make a podcast in the next week. A guy sent me an audio recording of a five-minute podcast where he was thanking me for exactly that. He, I never even met the guy. He never got on a mastermind conference like this, never emailed me, but went through the mastermind community training completely and on his own and was able to go from you know, being on a wait list one year to having multiple acceptances to medical school the next year without direct contact with me. So what I'm saying is, imagine this for a minute. Let's say you didn't do the study habits, and so you don't, your grades aren't maybe the greatest. Okay? And then how are you going to explain that if you don't go through the success story format in your essays? So if you have to go out of order with this stuff, you will find that you know, there's a, a piece missing to it. Now, I know that we can't all do a lot of stuff in retrospect. If you, know, you find the mastermind community whenever you find it. I'm not saying to regret any of that or anything strange about, hey, you should have started sooner. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that the more time you have, the, then the more we can kind of work with. And I hope that that gives you some guidance on where do I start depending on how much time I have. Yes, it's ideal to go through all of it because by the time you go through all of it, you will be more knowledgeable than probably 90% of the people that are at the step you are. And that includes medical students too. If you ask first-year medical students about the process for getting accepted into residency and getting you know, jobs on the outside and what their career is going to look like, they don't know. First year medical students and second and sometimes third year don't even really know how residency works at all. If you'll go through all the mastermind community uh, training, you will be a resource for the people around you.